Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azureautomation.com and today in this video I'll be talking about the all new Parallels Desktop version 19. So this is an amazing new release of Parallels Desktop comparing to version 17 or 18 because in all those versions of Parallel Desktop we had seen a lot of improvement pretty much focusing on supporting of the Apple M1 chip. But this time with version 19 of Parallel Desktop so many things are really going on over here and these are the things that we are going to be seeing in this particular video. So basically if you can see in this Parallel Desktop Pro Edition, they have a lot of support focusing on developers, creators, and power user. And the one thing which we are going to be focusing too much is towards the developer side rather the creators or the power user. Because as a developer, me, who is doing quite a lot of testing and development, especially in the Apple M1 chip, this feature that we are going to be seeing today are quite awesome. The first important feature, as you can see over here, is the support of automated workflow using command line integration with Packer, Vagrant, Jenkins, and more. So we could do this whole automation of workflow just using the command line of Parallel Desktop. And not only that, for the first time in Parallel Desktop, we can run the x86 Docker container in Apple Silicon, which is amazing. I mean, this is something which is running using Rosetta 2 transitioning layer, but that is amazing as well, because using this, we could able to run the x86 Docker container, which was something completely not possible before, but now we could able to do that right using this parallel desktop, which is amazing. So you don't really require anything like an ARM based Docker container. You can just straight away run the x86 Docker container using this parallel desktop. And finally, you can see that there is an amazing Visual Studio code extension, which will make your life much much easier so in order for you to try out this parallel desktop you have to have at least the parallel desktop like the basic edition but the pro edition is the one which is going to have quite a lot of features as you can see over here so I'm going to show you how this actually works from the parallel desktop 19 so in order for that first of all I'm going to open the parallels desktop over here and you will notice that this parallel desktop 19 which I have at the moment has got so many things going on over here I have many different versions of Kali Linux. I also have Ubuntu x86 version. It's not the one with the 64-bit ARM edition, but it is an x86 64-bit non-ARM edition of Ubuntu, which is running over here. And it's running on the Rosetta 2 emulation layer. And this is the Fedora, which is again the ARM version and Windows 11 is the ARM version as well. So I have so many different operating systems going on. Once you click this plus button this time, you'll also notice that there is this download Ubuntu with the x86-64 emulation and there is this Rosetta symbol over there. So which is just going to be a differentiation factor for you to tell you that you can use the x86 based operating system, which is the Ubuntu operating system, right in the Parallels desktop, which is awesome. And you can also install quite a lot of operating system pretty much like how we do before. So not quite a lot of things going on over there. But as I told you, this release of Parallel Desktop is especially very, very useful for developers and developer focused. And I'm going to show you what that really means. So if I open my Visual Studio code and if you go to the extensions over here and if you search for Parallels, you'll see that there is a Parallels Desktop extension. And I already installed this Parallels Desktop extension and I will quickly show you how this amazing Parallels Desktop extension is going to really work. So in order for that, you can go to this Parallels Desktop extension over here and you will notice that I have got all the virtual machines which are configured in my parallel desktop are being listed over here in this Visual Studio code as well. So there are so many things we can really do over here. We can just start running the virtual machines from here, or we can also see the actual backup or the snapshot, which is taken using our smart guard of Apple over here as well. So you can see that I have my snapshots going on. I can look at that as well. Not only that, if I have any of the Ubuntu operating system, which is like an x64 64 emulation that you are seeing over here you can also see if that i have got any other containers or stuffs running i'll quickly show you what i really mean about those things right now so first thing is i'm gonna go and open one of the operating system from here for example if i wanted to run my windows 11 operating system i can just hit this resume vm over here you see that there is this thing running which means it is resuming my windows 11 operating system and boom you can see that i have my windows 11 operating system the good thing about windows 11 operating system this time with the parallel desktop is you can use your fingerprint to authenticate windows 11 operating system right from the parallels desktop as well so this is another api extension which is released in this particular version which is quite neat but i'm not going to go dig into that particular feature right now i am quite happy with what 
this is. I mean, there are so many improvements happen in Windows 11 area, especially with the graphics department and the way that you can use the DirectX and stuff. We are not going to touch the games and stuff. As I told you in this video, we're going to focus fully on the developer side. So I'm going to quickly show you other features of the development stuff that we can actually see over here. The most exciting thing, as I told you, is the x86-64 emulation support, which was not there all these days, is available in Parallel Desktop 19 this time. So if I quickly spawn this particular version of the Ubuntu operating system, as you can see, there is this Ubuntu operating system coming up and I have Docker enabled there as well. So there is this Docker already running. And guess what? You can see that we have this Docker containers option this time, which is quite neat and awesome. And this feature is going to really, really show you all the details that you can see over here. So this Docker image, as you are seeing over here, is basically an x86 version of the Docker image. And guess what? You can also create a Docker container on the fly, or you can even spin this particular uh, Docker container on the fly. So you can see that I can just press this power button to click this start Docker container, and it is running the Docker container for me on this particular virtual machine as you are seeing over here. This is quite neat and see that this Docker is already running. So if I go to the terminal this time and if I just do sudo docker ps hyphen a and you see that this particular container is currently running and this is something which I told you it's an actual x86 64 bit version of the Docker container which is running over here using the x86 image. And not only that, we can now create an x86 version of the Docker container for the Microsoft SQL Server if you wanted to. You see that this one, I can go ahead and select that. And you will notice that now it is creating a Docker container for Microsoft SQL Server 2022 x86-64 emulation version right into this particular Ubuntu operating system, which is quite awesome. I mean, I have never seen this kind of magic happen before. And now with this particular version of Parallels Desktop, we could able to do that and we could able to achieve that. Well, that is really happening. And I also really wanted to show you that you can also see all the console logs and you can even get into the Docker container right from this machine, the host machine. You don't really have to get into the Ubuntu machine as well. So you can go ahead and click this logs and you see that there is this whole trial log coming up from the Selenium grid as you can see over here. So that is quite awesome. And you can also get into the Docker container by adding the container to the VM. You see that? So that comes in as well. And now you can see there is the bash. So I can just do an LS and I can see all the details for that particular container coming up. So that is neat as well. And I guess the SQL Server is downloaded right now. And you can see that this image is coming up for us over here. And Microsoft SQL Server is also running as a container. So now if I go and click this logs, you will notice that the whole lot of logs are coming up for this particular SQL Server database, which is neat. And I see there is no performance lag or anything like that because I can guarantee you that the performance is pretty much like how it was running with the ARM version of the Ubuntu before. And it is quite exactly the same like how it was before as well. So now I can really, really tell you that using Parallels Desktop, we can completely liberate the power of x86 versions of Docker images and containers running in Apple M1 chip much, much easier, pretty much like how we do with the Windows PC or laptops like that. And the most important thing is because these M1 laptops are super fast compared to the Windows versions of PCs or laptops, I always think that this is going to be super amazing in order to really control the way how we can improve our workflow compared to the Windows machines. And now that I have shown you how all these features are really working over here, we can also do quite a lot of option as shown in the documentation of this particular Parallels Desktop extension over here. So you can see that you can also host a virtual machine. You can also create a Vagrant box management from here itself. I mean, if you have Vagrant uh, installed and then you can also control the Vagrant images from here. So if I just go over here in the Parallel Desktop extension, you can see there is a plus button there. So once I hit this plus button, you can also create a new virtual machines right from here. So you can choose the operating system. You can either create a Mac operating system right away, or you can also create a Linux operating system and you can choose the distro from here. 
is it a generic Linux or a Photon OS, Red Hat or Parrot OS, you can choose that and then you can choose the version from here. And depending upon the version that you choose, this versions of Red Hat or stuff is going to come up for you automatically. You can give your own ISO from here or you can download the ISO straight away from the internet. It's all going to be happening for you automatically. So you can see that for the Parrot OS, there is no way that you can really upload the ISO image. Rather, it's going to do it for you. And you can also specify use Rosetta to run x86 binary. So once you do that, this operating system is also going to support running the x86 Docker containers for you right into this particular machine. And not only that, you can also now go and click this add group to create a group if you wanted to, and you can group all these machines and you can start all the machines on that particular group, pretty much like how you do with the Kubernetes and stuff. You can manage that. You can do quite a lot of management right from this particular Visual Studio Code extension. And that's it, guys. These are things which I feel like Parallels Desktop 19 is really, really making quite a lot of improvement compared to its earlier version because this version is too much dev focus, too much creator focus, too much power user focus than compared to their earlier versions. And that's it about the Parallels Desktop 19, especially on the Apple M1 chip. I know there are some features very very much for the x86 versions of Apple as well. But since I don't really have a machine with an Intel processor, I can't really show you. But as I told you, this version is already amazing with these feature and I'm quite excited to use this feature. Let me know what you thought about and I'm sure you'll be excited with these features which you might have been waiting for for quite a long time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you in the next one.